Good morning, everybody. I'm Lou. I'm here with uh, my colleagues in the arena this morning to show you a demonstration of our search and rescue dogs. So as you saw from the VT in the slides, Lowland Rescue is a completely volunteer search and rescue organization. We deploy on behalf of the police and the other emergency services to search for high risk missing people. We have 36 Lowland Rescue teams in the UK, which consist of over 1,800 members who provide a variety of life-saving services from search to water and everything in between. What we're going to show you here today is a little bit of a demonstration of the work that the search dogs do. We're going to show you how we start off their training up through, uh, through the grades to how we get the end picture. So when you think of a search and rescue dog, you're probably thinking about a dog searching on a hillside, lost walkers. In Lowland Rescue, we operate in different environments to that, typically parks, heathlands, uh, open forestry, not on the mountains, uh, which means that the type of missing person that we're looking for is also a little bit different. Generally, the vast majority of our call-outs are for people who are suffering with Alzheimer's or living with dementia and who may have become confused and wandered. All of the dogs and the handlers that you see today are all completely volunteers. We don't charge for any of our services. Uh, all the time that we give is given freely. And the dogs are all pets first and foremost and they work alongside us in the search and rescue. So we have a variety of different dogs here today. Uh, across all the different teams, we've got loads of different dogs. Jack Russells, uh, gun dogs, Labradors, Spaniels, Collies. We've got a cockapoo here today with us. Uh, but it really doesn't matter what type of dog you've got. We can uh, work with them and train them for this work. So we're going to show you today the first stages, first of all, of how the dogs start. So you can see that the dogs... Uh, on the sides are playing a game of piggy in the middle. So this is just to get the dogs used to running backwards and forwards between the two people. Uh, because in the end, what we want the dogs to do is to find the person, tell us that they found them and take us back to that person. So the dogs are just getting used to running between people, getting their rewards from different people. It might be the handler or it might be the person who's acting as their body. The next stage from this is that the dogs will move on to do what we call a scene runaway. So you're going to see the handlers hold the dogs. The person who's pretending to be uh, the, our missing person, so our dog's body, is going to wind the dog up with the toy. Uh, let, the dog's going to see where the person is going. And then the handler will let the dog go and the dog will run to that person and get its reward uh, once it's found its person. Now, obviously, this is a very set up situation. We're not out in woods and things here. So, for the benefits of this, we're just using our little hides uh, so that the dogs can go backwards and forwards into the hide. Once the dogs are confidently going and finding the people from that scene runaway, we move on to doing an unseen runaway. So the dogs will be turned around so they don't see where the person's going. Uh, and once the person's hidden, the handler will send them to go and find that person. And we build this up in as many different places as we can, using as many different people as we can, as the volunteers who are hiding, so that the dogs get used to finding everybody, children, uh, males, females, anybody who we ask them to go and find, and a variety of different, uh, different people. So, uh, once they've done their unseen runaways, the next thing that we need to teach the dogs to do is to do what we call an alert. So, we're going to swap some dogs around a little bit, and uh, our people are going to stay hidden, and the dogs that come out next are going to show you a variety of different alerts. So when the dogs have found people, often they can be a long way away from us, so we won't know that the dog has necessarily found. So the dog needs to have some way of telling us that it's found. So starting with Jan over here with Gus. Jan, if you give us a wave. She, there she is. Uh, she's going to show a bark alert. So 
Gus will go and find his person. Uh, once he's found his person, he's going to come back to Jan and bark at her to tell her that he's found somebody. And then as you can see, Jan gives him a lovely, nice reward so that he's got his reward for doing the alert. Well done, Jan. Oh, he's found another person. <laughs> All right, now next we're going to have Rich and Sasse. Uh, Rich is uh, going to work. Sasse, who's the little border collie over there at the end, uh, is going to give us a little wave. Sasse does a, lift, a different type of alert, so she's going to find her person. She'll then come back to Rich and jump up at him to tell him that she has found her person. So we'll let him show that one. Good girl. I say, so once she jumps up again, she gets her reward for performing that behavior. And the way that we choose the alerts is a little bit led by a handler preference and also what the dogs do themselves naturally in the earlier stage of the training. Some dogs get quite excited and bark. Some dogs uh, will jump up and sort of, oh, look, I found, I found, I found. So we work with the dogs a little bit to de develop their type of alert. Uh, now, Otto, the Labrador over there with Roe, uh, he's got a different alert again. So he's got what's known as a bring cell alert. So you might be able to see that hanging down from his collar, he's got a little blue tape uh, that's going to hang down from his collar while he's working. Once he's found his person, he will pick that up and hold it in his mouth so that Roe will know that he has found his person. <laughs> he's going to go and find the people outside. He says, it's, it's a little bit too easy. It's a little bit too easy for uh, Otto the Superdog. <laughs> so you could see that once he'd been out there and found whoever it was that he found out there, uh, they don't know that they're being found, but he doesn't know who he's looking for. He's just working on air scent. Uh, he picked up his little tag that hangs down and carried that back in his mouth and again Ro rewarded him uh, for doing that. So next we're going to have Jofi and Maya and she is over here so she's going to whip us away from under the little craft sign. Now Maya is a bark at the missing person so she's going to come and find her person in the hide and then she's going to stay with them and bark. <coughs> And she'll stay barking until her handler gets there so that she can come along and then help the misper as she needs to. Brilliant. Okay, so next we're going to show you the process in full. So once the dogs have found their person, uh, they've come back, they've alerted us to the fact that they've found that person, they then need to take us back to the person. So the handler and the support person who's with them will then be able to give any medical attention uh, or get help and back up if it's needed to the missing person. So we're going to go uh, around and we're going to do it one at a time again. So we're going to start off over here with Alan and Rusty, the Labrador. Alan, if you give us a little wave. Uh, so Alan is going to go let Rusty go. Rusty's going to go and find the person. Ooh. Uh, and once he's found his person, he will do his alert. He also is a bring cell alert. So he'll pick up his little tag. You can see he's got it in his mouth. And then Alan will ask him where the person is and he takes him straight back. So this links back a little bit to the piggy in the middle exercise that we were doing before where the dogs were getting used to running backwards and forwards between the people. Uh, that gets them used to getting their reward sometimes from the misper, sometimes from the handler. Uh, so that was really well done. So Sassy and Rich are going to show us again. So she's going to do her alert and this time she's going to take Rich back to the person. Good girl, Sasha. She can have a round of people. She's a very good girl. And then next up, we've got John and Isla. 
So Isla is a jump alert, so she's going to find her person, come back, jump up, and take John back to them. <laughs> she says, come on, Dad, you can see that the person's there. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> And then over here we've got Bridget, so she's going to let go and come and find, and we'll see if we can spot what type of alert they do. There we go, another jumper. Yay, well done, brilliant. Well done, everybody. That's brilliant. Okay, so that's a little overview of the air scenting dogs. Obviously, we have to use a little bit of imagination that this is a, a large, vast area. There's woodland, there's brambles, there's all kinds of things, rather than just a field with a few tents in it. Uh, but the air scenting dogs are looking for any human scent. So what we're going to show you now is the ground scenting dogs, or the trailing dogs. Now, these are dogs that are trained to find a specific scent of a person. So we're going to move everybody to the side. Uh, Jan's going to switch dogs and she's going to fetch in a little border collie called Diesel. And what we're going to do is we're going to line some people up with me in the middle of the ring. I'm going to take my jacket with me and I'm going to pop this down over here. And Diesel will come in, he'll have a little bit of a sniff of this. And that will give him the scent of me. Uh, it's my jacket, I've been wearing it all morning. So we're gonna pop it down, so he'll be able to smell me. And then we're gonna line up, uh, and he's gonna go and sniff each person, and hopefully, when he finds me, he will, he will stay with me. He won't go on to the, uh, to the next person. He will want to stay with me, and he will alert Jan to the fact that, oh, he's found me, and that's the right scent. So she's going to bring him in. She needs to let him smell the article so that he can get in his head which scent it is that he's looking for. So he'll have a little sniff of that and then he'll come along, come along the people, probably have a little sniff at their hands and things, uh, get the smell of the person. And then when he's found the right person, you can see he's in no rush to go anywhere. So we will then reward him for doing that. Okay, so you can see that he had no hesitation. He knew that that was me. He stayed with me uh, and um, didn't want to move on to our next person because he knew that, okay, this is the person that I'm looking for. So we're going to move out of the way now. We're going, to see, we're going to show you how we develop that into the next stage of that, of where it's useful for that if we know where a person has gone missing from, so if they're a, a person who's a little bit confused, maybe they've wandered out of their home or their care home, uh, they've gone missing from there, we can take one of our trailing dogs, give them an article that belongs to that person, uh, and as you've seen, Diesel could smell the specific scent of me. So we're going to bring in next Bert, who is a black and tan coonhound. Sarah here is going to drop her jumper, so she's going to drop her scent article, and she's walking off across the arena. And she's laying a trail as she goes that is all coming off her, a little bit of ground disturbance, uh, uh, scent coming off from skin rafts that are coming off her. And they're creating a picture to Bert of where she's walked. So Bert will be able to come in, he will sniff Sarah's jacket to get the scent that he is working, and then hopefully he will follow the trail where she's walked pretty perfectly. Uh, as you can see, he's got his nose down on the floor working. The ground scent dogs work on long lines with their noses down. The air scenting dogs from earlier worked very much on the air and the wind. And once he gets to Sarah, he'll then uh, stay with her so Simon can get to the end of the lead and give him his reward. Well done, Bert. Thank you. 
Brilliant, fantastic. So you've got there a little picture of the different types of dogs that we do. We do have dogs that work uh, on boats, on water, who can pack, uh, find people that have drowned in water as well. Uh, but hopefully that's given you a little bit of an overview of the work that we do. We have got a stand in Hall 3, stand 110. We've got loads of free goodie bags. So if you want to find out a little bit more about the work that we do, or you want to come and grab a goodie bag that's got things for you and your dog in it, then pop up there and visit us. But I'm going to get everybody to just do a little lap of honour. You can give them a nice big round of applause. And thank you all very much for your time today.